break it out. What the break it out? What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Worth the Conversation with your boy, J. Jeezy Jenkins. My guest tonight is one of the funniest guys in Hollywood, from movies to on stage comedy. He does it all. He's best known for films like Next Friday and one of my favorites, All About the Benjamins. Please welcome the one and only, my guy, Mike Epps. I'm also proud of you, bro, because we, we came, we've been through it. You know, we've we yes, been sir. from the bottom to the top for real. And uh, I just been seeing you grinding, man, and just looking good and just healthy and happy. And man, how you doing? I'm doing good, man. It's good to talk to you, Jesus, man. That's yes, my sir. partner right there, my <laughs> brother, man, my brother. Yes, sir. You've been doing you've been, good, man. And I've been seeing you being, uh, you know, motivational in more ways than one on your on your IG um, during the pandemic, and just um, you know keeping people in good spirits, man. How, how your spirits been? It's been pretty good, you know, just a little up and down, you know. As I was saying, man, I, I was unfortunate enough to lose my parents in December. So it's been it's been a transition that uh unbelievable transition, man. Just trying to uh get settled and you know, just have closure with that, man. Right. You know, but but God is good. I, I still believe in the Lord. I, I still believe in his strength. So Yes, sir. I've been, I've been, I've been uh, with, with with his strength. I've been getting through, Jesus. You know. Yeah, cause I feel, I, cause I, you know, I lost my mother during the pandemic too. I, I really been like I grieved. Different. Oh man, condolence. I yeah. didn't know that, man. Yeah. yeah, thank you, brother. And and for me, it's like my grieving process was a little different this time. Like my sister still go through it, and I, I I'm kind of, I kind of bury my head and work. And when I come out, um, what's that process been like for you? I mean, you know. <clears throat> I mean, as you know, man, you know that's these 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 women, our parents and stuff. These women, that's all we ever knew. Right. So to 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 lose someone that uh that you always that the only only woman that you really ever knew, you know, from the beginning to to up until now, you know, it's it's been a hell of a process, man. You know, but. Like I said, you know, when you believe in the Lord, when you believe in a higher power, you know, you you uh, learn to live with it and have a little closure, man, and right. understand that uh, it ain't all so bad, man. Right. You know. Yeah, for me, for me though, my process was, you know, just going back and taking the memories and putting the good memories in the air, and just remembering the um the conversation. You know, my mom was a G, so she taught me a lot. So it, even when oh, I'm about yeah. to. You might I'm about to do something crazy out here in my ear, boy. You better not. <laughs> you, know? you better get out there and go get it. And, yeah. and I see, I see you. Uh, you remarried. You got a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful daughter, man. She is amazing. Thanks. And I haven't even met her yet. I just, I see when you post <laughs> oh, up. I'm like, you, wow. Man. What's that like? You know, it, just remarrying and, and and going to fatherhood again, and and where you at in your career? Like, what's that like? Oh man, you know, it's beautiful, man. Uh, <clears throat> I got six kids. I got six kids. This mm -hmm. is this is my that's my sixth kid. And you know, I love my kids, man. My kids are my kids are everything to me. You know, my wife is everything to me. Uh, I am in a new marriage and and uh you know what I'm learning in life is, man, you know you you go through a lot of uh trial and error and sometimes it takes a couple times to get it right, you right, know. Right. It take it take a little bit to get it right, but like I said, I love my kids, man, and they're my inspiration. They they're the reason why I get up and go so hard every day, and uh, and uh, try to be positive because I know that you know at 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 some point, you know, in your life, no matter what you came from, you have to you have to take that position, man. You know, you got to take that position that. Probably sometimes you don't want to take it. Sometimes you want to wish you could stay back in the past and do some of the things you used to do. Right, but right. you got to get that. You got to get that part where you just. And I, I noticed that about you too, because I, I saw you like right around that time. It just like you exploded. Like you were just like super focused. You got married. Yes, you had a baby. I see you with the kids. I see you going back and forth. 
um, to the crib. And it was crazy because it was like you were doing all the right things. You were still connecting with the people. You were still yes, like, sir. you was Mike Epps, but you was this different Mike Epps. And it was yeah. just like you was doing all the, the, the right things. And it's just like, you know, I'm I'm just I'm asking, you know, for myself, like how do you I see the on? same thing with you though, man. Really? We, was, we, was, <laughs> we was both watching each other do it. <laughs> I watched you with I, hey, I watched everything. Hey, I'm letting you interview me, hey, but <laughs> we, we was both doing it at like, the same, same time. time. Yeah. No, but you were definitely motivation, man, because I was like, damn, like, this was up. And and it's just like you just had this this different glow and, and, and I'm just watching, you know, the things you were doing from your shows to your business. To, to your, uh, your your new show, what you was doing with the uh, uh, all the uh, artists, and it was just yeah. like a bunch. It's just a. And I, I, was you thinking of that stuff during the pandemic, and you just had time to do it, or you were just like, you know what I mean? Because it seemed like at one time you just was like, you were just on this grind. It was just going, 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 you know. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I think I think I think that I think the pandemic. I think the pandemic. Um, it taught us a lot, man. You know it. it a lot of people got a chance to get to know themselves a little better mm -hmm. and uh, try to find out what was more valuable to ourselves. You know, I learned what was more valuable to me uh, during the pandemic. I, I learned that I didn't need as much as I had. Right. That's you real. know, I didn't have to. I, I'm like, wow, you know, it was it was a it was a sad situation that whole year that it happened but it was a silver lining through there that a lot of people got a, a benefited a lot from it i benefited right. a lot from this this uh pandemic just it, it just it just it just opened me up man i said wow man you know it took the world to shut down for people to understand a lot of things and 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 take value in things you yeah, know yeah yeah no even for myself like even just being there to be at the crib and and, and just get some quality time with the fam or just get on the phone. And it was crazy. I mean, one night I was sitting on the patio and I was just lit and I was calling everybody on FaceTime. I think I called you on FaceTime, Kevin yeah. Hart, Fat Joe. I'm just calling people, but it was just like, <laughs> man, how you doing? And it just like, it just really made me want to tighten up on my relationships. You know what I'm saying? Because, and, and I think I was texting you there like, man, you know, you're good, oh, yeah. you're straight. And it just really made you, because when you don't see people for a while, you have to watch them through social media or just, you know, see what they're doing. You just always want to check in because if I seen you out in the road or when you was in the same town, I might pull up on one of these shows or whatever. We have a chance to chop it up, and I don't think a lot of people know. Like you and my homies from my neighborhood, Mike and my homies from my neighborhood, and one of my best friends. Every time we at his show, they go in the dressing room and they go back and forth. On oh the, on man, the where is he at? That's <laughs> my spot, man. <laughs> they go back and forth on the iPod playing '80s music and see who killed him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. We were that was my man. He was a fool, yeah. boy. I love that dude, and, man. Um, I mean, you know, you miss things like right. that. So, it, like, like I was saying earlier, when I see you doing your skate party and by yourself and in the basement, I'm like, damn, like, man, Mike really feeling himself, man. That's what's up. Oh, yeah. Like, he, he in his own world. And I love it. And, oh yeah, um, love it. Um, your biggest lesson that fatherhood has taught you, you say you have six kids, amazing kids, and mm -hmm. I know my biggest lesson fatherhood has taught me and I tell my son all the time is like, you, you haven't did anything that I haven't done. And, and, and I feel for him now because he's so ambitious, but he also has a chip on his shoulder because he mm -hmm. feels like he wants to walk in my shoes. Of course, do his own thing, but he feels like he has to walk in my shoes to do that. And I tell him all the time, like, you know, Whatever you do, that's what you do as long as you do it the best. And my biggest lesson I've learned is is, is um just having compassion for him because I know it's hot. I mean, it's, hot, it's hard right now. It's, it's different. It's hard being Jeezy's yeah, son, yeah, right. I can imagine. <laughs> it's, it's hot you know, being young like Jeezy's son, whoa, right. you know what I mean? So, like, that's, that's like, you know, that's the biggest lesson I have, just to, you know, just to, just to have compassion with him. But what about yourself? Well, you, hey, you know, you, you put the words right in my, in my mouth, man. You know, uh, you know, coming from where we come from, man. You know, we 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 seen so many things and been so many places. You know, uh, when you look at your kids, like you said with your son, you said you, I could tell the way you said that. In, in in a lesson you was you was best and you was you was basically telling them that you know you our chi our kids gotta go get their own lessons and right. sometimes when you when you don't see them go through the hard lessons that we went through you kind of 
you scared for them. Right. You're like, wow, they don't have the experience. Right. Because it's just it's just a different time now. Right, right. They right. they couldn't they they couldn't even get a, a a little bit of the experience that we had because the time ain't the same. Right, right, right. And it's real. So it 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 it's it's a bundle of things that they just don't know, man. You know, and you really can't pour it on them because. Right. You know, it's, it's a time thing. That's just, that's just like with our parents. It's the same way, man. Right. You know, my my mother and father they they had some some jewels and and uh, some lessons that I didn't get, and and I I could tell that through it, over, over the time. I was right. like, wow, my mother and father they know so much more than me in right. so many different areas. Even though I've been in show business and I've been right. all over the world. My mother and father were still sitting on a jewel. They were still sitting on right. valuable jewels that right. I just didn't get. And and and, 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 and have without them the telling road, me, I wasn't gonna get it. And have you been on the road and being out there? You kind of get um, you kind of get detached from, you know. I'm speaking for myself as well. Like you re do. reality and morals, not in a bad way, but it's just like you so going. And then they yeah. take them and say one sentence to you, like, "Baby, just slow down and think about what you're doing." And you're like, "Damn, yeah. you know what? <laughs> you know what I mean, uh, uh, you know, go go call your sister now. You know, what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> call your sister." And I, and I and I learned that. My dad tell me, "Yo, call your sister." And over the pandemic, I'm like, "Yo, my sister is really smart." Like mm. she's always been smart, but when it comes to life, like she just balanced with it. Like she understood. I could call her about something. She's like, bro. Is she um, older than you? She's younger, but she acts like my big sister. Wow. You know what I mean? Because when she gives me, like, because she she knows how to take things and, and, and explain them to me. And I go, damn, you know what? That's what's up. Because I never thought about it like that. got a different perspective. Right, right. And, and it's a real, it's a black woman's perspective. You know what I'm saying? So it's That's solid. Right. You know what I mean? It's solid. <laughs> yeah. like, she ain't no, no game being played. I'm like, okay, I understand. But we're going to go to a quick break, and we'll be right back with my guy, Mike Epps, right here. Worth the conversation, baby. Worth the conversation. Mike Epps is still here with me, and we definitely have much more to talk about. Yo, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I sit back, and I, I watch certain people I really respect, and I was like, how do you balance, like, real life with still being, like, Mike Epps, like funny, like every time. Like, I never see you in a bad mood. I'm quite sure it happens, but it's like yeah. when you see you, like you, you, you give off Mike Epps, and it's like you probably could be going through a million things in your real life. But if I ever check oh, yeah. you out on something, I, I don't get that. How do you balance that? Well, you know, I just think that, you know, like 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 you said, man. We 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 entertainers, man. We have we we have two separate lives, you know. Right. We have. We have our entertainment life, and then we have our normal life. And uh, w my normal life has always been more important than my entertainment life. Mm, that's real. You know, I've, I've always honored my normal life more than the entertainment life. Now, that was a moment in my life that I thought one was more important than the other. Okay. You know, I I thought I thought being an entertainer and uh, making money and being famous was more important than my normal wow. life until I realized that that won't work unless I had my normal life intact. Wow. You know, That's what's up? because 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 I I look at you the same way. I'm like, sometimes when I see you, I'm like, I'm like, damn. Young Jeezy is one of them brothers that definitely is. You had you had a song called Soul Survivor. Correct. And that was one of my best songs because uh if if someone wanted to, to describe you, that song was a perfect description of you because wow. from the it. outside looking right. in, man, you was in you in, which I think was real. Man, you was in the middle of the ocean right, right. with piranhas, right. sharks. Right. Everything that could that could possibly destroy a bro brother. Right, right, right. You know, I seen you in the midst of that. Right. And I mean, we could count on our hand how many brothers didn't make it out yes. of it. Yeah, I mean, probably, probably take both both it, sets. It, it, yeah. it, it took something in you. What what was it that was in the center of you that was that 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 gave you a chance to 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 see outside? Cause I'm like <laughs> I'm like this dude here, man. You know he ain't no, 
you know, you ain't no rat. You right, ain't right, no right. dope. You know, you 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 you, right. you stand up guy. You know. You know what it really was, Mike. It was it was my grandmother. Like she instilled so many values in me so early on because I, I lived with my mother and my father till they divorced, and then I went and lived. I, I left my mom's house when I was thirteen, and I went yeah. with my grandmother. She took over the role basically as my mother. But mm. the difference between my mother and my grandmother, my mother was young, so she was living her life, of course. Right. But my grandmother was so hands-on with me, and I sat under her for so long that I really picked up her wisdom and, and her, her, her mm. aura. And she was solid. Like, she didn't play no games, but she just gave me so many morals and values and things that I didn't know about life that she even explained to me, even if you do things right and do things wrong, just do them the right way. And it all come back around. And I just kind of grew up that way, and she was like, yo, just show respect, because that's going to get you farther. But if somebody disrespect you, go above and beyond to show them you ain't the person to be disrespected. Goddamn. Mm -hmm. And always take care of your people. You know, so I'll right. be the guy, you know, at school and, and, and don't even got lunch and trying to get somebody my lunch card so they can eat, yeah. you know, free lunch. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. for me, it's just like, she just gave you me You've always been like that. Right. Every, every since I met you, met, right. met you, she was like, what can yeah. I do for you? Can I help you type dude? And she, and she did that, man. And and. It's crazy because that's what I try to give my kids and, and anybody that I, because the thing about it is, is always new level, new devil. So no matter what you do, it's gonna be that bad there. But if new you level, keep, if you devil. keep your, if you keep your wholeness, it's easier to navigate to because you don't fall victim to all the temptation and, and get caught up. Cause it's just like, I already seen my uncles go to jail. I knew that one for me. I was a pretty boy. Ain't no way in here I'm gonna be sitting in jail. Right? <laughs> right. No. Then, um, right. And then as far as like, you know, I had uncle, uh, uncles that was, alcoholics and drug addicts and it just didn't pan out well for them and I saw like one or two monkers die early people I really respect and I'm just like how you get caught so caught up in a bottle that, that it kills you or how do you get so caught up in drug life that you can't sustain a real life and everything I saw I, I saw people's mistakes and I think that's my gift because I can look at somebody's mistakes and go I ain't doing that so I'm gonna go over here and then I'm gonna go learn how to do that so I could do this and, and learn how to do that so I could do this and it's just the fire that keeps me going because I understand that you know I have morals and values and I think that's the only thing that makes me different because a lot of times when you come up in the neighborhoods we come up in it's, it's you know you just kill or be killed that's it but if you got that's the right. morals and the values you, you tend to stand out if you ever seen the civil rights there's leaders because they have different different sets of values and they stand on that you know what I'm saying so mm -hmm. in in the music world I could never be a politician, by the way, because I'm too honest. So they ain't gonna work. <laughs> Straight up, <huh? laughs> that's not you gonna tell the truth too I'm much. Tell the truth, you know what I'm saying? And then um, with music, hey, <laughs> they, they lit over there. And they fair. won't get to stay away from the door. Bang! <laughs> that's I'm fair. Sorry, man. No, you good, baby. FedEx. <laughs> yeah, they knocking at the door, and I'm on the I'm on doing a zoom with Young Jesus, baby. I can't do this. <laughs> Oh, uh, but yeah, man. Um, that that's those are the things, Mike. I, I think that's what the things that make us great. Even like yourself, like you being raised from where you raised from, that's what make you different. So when you go out in Hollywood and you doing your movies, you still got that 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 in you. You got that that base in you. You got that 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 uh, that that solidness in you that a lot of people don't have. Even when I was out in L.A., that's what I really realized too. A lot of people don't have that. You know, what I'm saying they're shucking job you yeah, and, and and try to. You know, everything's about what can they get for themselves, not what can they do for you. Yeah, so I commend you on that. Um, man, talking to my guy. I mean, I've been seeing you speak a lot on, on the things that are going on in the country, man. Like I heard you on um, on the Breakfast Club. You said some pretty, pretty profound stuff about everything that's going on out there in the world, with these black kids being killed and these black men being killed. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, you know, you know the thing about that is, is that I'm sorry, man. They ain't got their stuff together. <laughs> no, you, could, man. <laughs> uh, uh, um, you know the thing of it is, Jeezy, is that these cops out here, man, they scared of us. Right. And they're not teaching these cops. They're hiring cops, man, that don't have a connection. That's that they disconnect with us is horrible, man. Right. right. You know, um, and, and they don't know how to deal with us. I mean, just imagine you, you, you know, you, 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 you get hired for a job and you get put in the ghetto. Right. 
and you ain't never been around these people in your life. Mm. You've seen them, but you don't really know how to talk to these right, people right, or right. deal with them. Right. And you can't even read if they're going to hurt you or not, or are you scared? I mean, or, or, or they, they scared? Or, or they're a threat, yeah. You can't even read them. So, so now I'm here to admonish you. I'm here right. to correct you. My job is to correct you. And so, but I'm afraid because I don't know who you are culturally. Right. And that's what's happening with these cops, man. They, 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 they're at these academies, man. They, they don't, they ought to have a class, a, a culture class that you mm. got to pass, man. Mm. Because there's no reason why. They are killing us, man, for nothing and not giving us an opportunity to to defend ourselves uh, in the right way. Right. You know, it's just I'm just tired of looking at it on the Internet, man. It's just it's just yeah, it's, it's too sad. much, man. It's and I, I, I don't understand it, man. I, I really don't. I mean, they 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 these these mass shooters, they, they run up in these places and shoot everybody and they walk them out calmly and one guy they went and got him some McDonald's. I'm like, Damn. I'm like, come on, America. Right, y'all, right. y'all, I know y'all ain't that bold that y'all just right. gonna sit there in our right. face and just keep killing us. Going to take another break, but I got much more with my guy, Mike Epps, when we return. Welcome back to Worth the Conversation. And I'm still tapped in with my guy Mike Epps, and we keeping it real right here. All about comedy and much more. Right here. It's worth the conversation. What makes a good comedian, man? Because I, I know you raw. I, I, I swear, I was, listen, I'm sitting, me and one of my guys went to this uh, this comedy club they had upstairs in Buckhead. It was like something everybody doing, Monday or Sunday night, I think. And I never forget, I was sitting in there, and you came in there, you started telling this uh, joke about um, your, your auntie and, and, and a quarter bird or something. And something, and I, I, yo, I'm talking about, man, my stomach was her. I was like, yeah, that's my guy right there. I, I, it was I, the I, Uptown Comedy I, Club. That's it, that's, it. that's my that's that's my comedian right there. <laughs> but what, but what, I related to that because I related to you. I was like, yo, I know he's not saying this on stage. And you yeah, was dead yeah, yeah. serious. <laughs> was hey, man, I was only speaking what I do, you know? <laughs> but what, what do you think makes a good comedian? Like, is, is, is it, is it being relatable? Is it what, what do you think makes people buy into what you do to, to consider it funny? Because you know, I might tell some jokes here and there when I'm just kicking it. A lot of people oh, well, don't you laugh. Cra- you funny. You one, you one of the you one of the you one of the rappers that's hilarious. And you know, people and, and listen for all our viewers out there. Please not get it twisted. Me and Jeezy did janky promoters together. Yes, we did. <laughs> I had a ball. <laughs> Hey man, that's people love old, that movie, that's a man. Old classic. We need to buy it back and put it back on Netflix. You and I. Yeah, for real, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. We, hey, you know what? We the Weinstein Company had it. I don't know how we gonna get it back. Yeah, we gotta figure it out, man. They gotta shoot a part two or something, man. We gotta do what we gotta do. I'm telling you. <laughs> but what do you but, think uh, makes a good I, good comedian? I think we'll make a good, you know, uh, one that can obs- uh, observe, one that has a great observation, mm. and uh and delivery, you know, to be able to, like you say, deliver it in a way where, uh, where it's, uh, 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 relatable, you know what I mean? Right. Like, like that's, that's the way, just, just like with your, just like with your songs, you right. know, like we, I write comedy probably like art, like you write your right. reps, like you, like I, when I buy a Jeezy album, and I'm looking at one song, two song, three song. Those are those are, are subject matters, and right. then everything up under the subject matter is a story. Right, right, right. Uh, and 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 that's what I do. You know, uh, if if that's just like you had the song, don't get caught. Right there, you go. <laughs> it's hilarious. Right, <laughs> but it's real. It, but it's real. <laughs> right. <laughs> You know, you said you had a couple old wrapped right. up in some dirty clothes. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> I mean that that's 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 detail right. and it's it's like I could see it. Right. You know, and that's how we tell jokes. That's how I think that's what makes a good comedian just like what makes a great rapper makes a great storyteller. Right, right, right. It's it's, it's detail. Relatable. Yeah, detail. No, I get it. 
Well, how do you feel about your place in Hollywood? Like, do you feel like you get the respect you deserve? Because I see you doing a lot of different shows, you're doing a lot of things. And you might not even care about Hollywood. I mean, you might be one of those guys. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you know what? Hollywood is, Hollywood is, I, I learned that it's fickle, man. Mm. I, I learned that it's, I learned that it's fickle. And um, one thing that I learned about Hollywood is that uh, you have to accept the way it is, right. the way it goes. You know, for a long time, I had, I had bitter moments because, you know, you judging, you judging things off of how you feel, maybe how your friends feel, your ages, people that are around you, and maybe y'all see all the same thing. And then you looking at yourself like, dang, you know, but uh, one has to understand, man, that that's a machine out there. Right. And that's a system. And for every one of your partners that come to you, just like I'm no, I, I, I know a million people came to you and told you, Jeezy, man, you should have so much more. Right. Grammys you and all. Be so right. Much. right. Grammys huh? and all. Grammys and all. They, they come with it. Yeah. <laughs> right. And, 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 and I'm, I'm a fan. I, I think, I'm like, who tell the better story about, right. like than Jeezy? Right. right. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> but then you, but then you look at, then you look at guys like Nas, and he's a, he's a, mm. he's an example of. This right. is a guy that was been in the business probably when we was working a job somewhere, right, 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 right. and wasn't even in the game, right. and he's just now he's getting his flowers. Dude, that's crazy, right? It's crazy. Just now getting his just due. Wow. So I, it's I almost like you like got that. the. It's almost like it's almost like, hey man, I'm going to ignore that part of the game the accolade game, the act, that part of the game. And I'm just going to focus on the great work that I do. Right. And, and, and it take it takes time and it takes a minute to learn how to do that as an artist. Cause you know how good you are, you know, the work that you've put in and you're looking at these other guys come along and you know, they ain't put in the work. Right. And you, and you, and you know that, they ain't they ain't doing it like you. They ain't right. dropping it like you. Right. But um like everybody say, man, you know, like the great Nipsey Hustle said, man, it's a marathon, it's not right. a sprint. Right. You yeah, know? Keep it going. It's crazy. We're you doing say that, this though. for life. It's crazy to say that though, because I, I I see people like yourself grind and you be out there in the trenches and I see you in some of the some of the smallest clubs to the biggest stages. Oh um, yeah. I see you pop up on people where you ain't have to. And I have to just I have to look at it and I see the the um social media comedy and I go, okay, is is it funny because it's on social media? Nothing to take from them, but is it just that moment? And will it be the same way if you was in a, in a room full of people and that they, they was just getting off work and coming to your show? So what do you yeah. what do you think co uh social media comedy versus comedy on stage? I mean, you know, Again, sometimes, man, uh, history and time can make you biased, make you bitter. Right. If one don't understand that, if one don't understand that one's time is different from another's time, and, and, and I like to, I like to use it, I like to use the sports analogy, man. You, right. That's can good you imagine one. these the, the NBA players right. that was really dogs out just, there? Just looking at LeBron and them now, like what the <laughs> hell? <laughs> you ain't even getting a Jordan, dime compared. Jordan, Jordan, like I had to go sell a million shoes <laughs> <laughs> to get there. No, you're right. You're right. That's that's a good way to look at it because now times are different. They're out. They, their reach is different, and and it's faster. Like social media is faster. But I look at it like myself. Like you know, when I first came in the game, I was selling a million, two million records, hard copies. So that's two million people that had to walk in the store and buy a CD. Then straight off the rip, so Snowman. Right. Straight off the rip. <laughs> so when you look at it now, you see you see three million records. You're like, damn, okay. But it's so easier to get. But it's still the same hustle. So you got to look at it. It's still art. You can't yeah. you can't take anything uh, away from it. And I, and I see a lot of people on on social media that I think are funny, but I don't know if I would go to uh, sit through a whole show. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a diff yeah, it's 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 a different hustle, and and, right. and it's vice versa. Because now, I don't, I can't do with the. I try, you know, I try the best I can, but um, I can't, I I can't get that. I don't understand 
social media like that. I think I do. I thought I have, but when you look at some of these comedians, man, it's everything they have is because of social media. You like, wow. Right. At first I didn't respect it. Right. Because I was like, wait a minute, they cheating. Right. But then again, I had to think about it. I was like, okay, this is the hustle. This is the new stage. stage. Yes, yes, yes. Well, our stage used to be hopping from club to club right, right, and right. going from city to city, gig to gig. Right. Now these dudes is putting on an illusion. Right. And when you come to see them, it's too late because they got all the money. They got your money already. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. You like me if you don't, know, you'll pay for the ticket. I got the awards. I got everything. Right, right. You know? and, 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 I, and, I, and I think, and I think, and I think, and and I think that, and I think that that part of the game, especially in the artist game, I think that there's 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 ten real ones and there's forty people trying to do it. Right, right. And you got right. one person that's trying to do it. Right. The forty people that's trying to do it, they love the one guy that's trying to do it right. versus right. the real artist. Right. Because they don't have no connection with the guy who got the real talent. Right, right, right. Or, or, or got the real story. Or got the real story. Yeah, because it's almost like, and, and that's the thing about social media. Like it's so it's set up so well. You can you can put on that facade. Because I remember having to go to Magic City with a million dollars worth of jewelry on and spend a million dollars to get that type of, you know what I mean? Like to get that type of energy. It's just like I remember Man. being in the club. DJ, what you need another hundred thousand? I'm like, bring it. You know, because I wanted well, that moment. I've seen you. I right. see. I, I've seen that too. If right. People think I. Pe people would think that was a lie, but right. that is the real truth. Yeah. Man, I seen you one time. I seen. I seen you one time. They came out the back <laughs> audience. I seen Jeezy at the uh, Magic City. It might have been Onyx or one right. of them. Right. But they came out the back on Jeezy, and they had one of them plastic see-through bags right. full of money. Right. I'm talking about 20s. And it wasn't no just ones. Right. It, was, it was cold right. cash. So, right. so that's real, man. That was yeah. a whole nother hustle. Yeah, but but to me, but I had to do that too. You know, at the time I was building my brand because I knew if I took care of the girls, if I, if I, if I, if I, that was my marketing strategy. You know what it I'm was. saying? Yeah, because that's what I was doing. But I just look at the cats who blew up on the internet didn't have to spend a dime. They just had to position themselves, you know what I mean, in the a, in a place. And I remember buying CDs and pressing them up to give them away. You're talking hundreds of thousands of CDs, that's a lot of money. But so in the first two, I was looking at the game like, man, like all you gotta do is press a button and upload. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So now I'm like, you ain't gotta go car to car because I used to be inside the club giving people CDs. And yeah. um, man, you know, so let me ask you, what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Because I, I, I know you, you, you rock with a lot of the greats. Yeah. Um, one time Will Smith told me, he said, never do anything, never do something, never, never do anything in this business for money. Mm. You know, wow. never, never do something that compromises your art versus money. And you know, I broke that rule a couple of times. <laughs> right. Because I mean, here's, here's a guy like Will Smith right. with the money telling you don't do nothing for money. <laughs> right. You still practicing. <laughs> <laughs> like, you got all the money. What you mean? <laughs> easy Great for, advice, easy, but easy I got to get say. there. Right. Easy for you to say. <laughs> Man, I got to take another break. But I got much more of my guy, Mike Epps, when we return. Back to work the conversation. Mike Epps is still here with me, and we definitely have much more to talk about. Y'all keep me here. You can't compromise um, something uh, monetary for your art because you, you're going to and, – and the times that I did do that, Jeezy, I lost, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I when agree. I went back and looked at something, I was like, oh, man, yeah, I agree. the money's gone, and, and, and I ain't I, happy. I ain't, right. No, I, I, I've been there. I, I've, I've – I've, I, I tried to tell myself that wasn't the reason why I was doing it, but given a different time, I probably wouldn't even move like that. Have you ever did an album that you didn't like? I have. I did several. You have? Yeah, I did several. Um, I, and, and based on that, based on quotas, the label telling me, yo, you got to put an album out in the next eight months. I go in the studio, you're going to whip something up. And I'm the type of person, I really like to take my time. I like to be in my zone. And I have to live a little bit so I know what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? Or know, know what I learned. And, and, and at that time, it turned into a hustle. 
And um, yeah. you know, after maybe after the recession, I think I dropped one or two that I know that I shouldn't have dropped, but it was more of a, a, a you know, you, you sign for 10 albums. If you, you got to put out two this year, and if you don't, you're going to be behind. And I'm just like, yo. And it was most probably the most painful thing I ever went through because when people depend on you to always be solid and be who you are, and you get caught up in the business because you, and that's why we was talking about not being too far removed from your people. Because you can check the temperature, you can see the lay of the land and see no you're not doubt. Moving right. But if you caught mm. up in the business, you know what I'm saying, it's so easy for you to get caught up in quotas and you're like, okay, let me just get it done so I can go do other things. And long story short, it wasn't wow. my best body of work because I didn't believe everything that I was saying. I knew at the end of the day when I turned it in, it was going to yeah. be something given to me for, for doing it in that time period. Yeah. That fast, yeah. So I how did promised you, myself. How did you, how did you, tra how did you, how did you, uh, transition from because we we all we all know you man for being a uh uh preaching the street, street gospel right 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 you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like believe it or not you know you didn't raise a lot of guys out here right right it's through just, your through your lyrics right. through your songs right what was that moment that you felt like that you that that you needed to tra transition from that street talk mm. to more of a man and intelligent, well, uh, uh, you know, and more of a teacher because right. you knew the justice was still so watching you. Right. They like, wait a minute, hold up, right. he ain't talking about this <laughs> and that, you know. I felt I felt like I had to do what was in my heart and, and really speak on what I was learning because that was my only. Um, platform to get my message across and mm. and I knew I was gonna lose some people I did I understood that but here we go again it wasn't about the monetary game I'm, I'm, I'm a I'm an urban philosopher so yeah I I write the way I feel I could talk to you and have a conversation it'll be real of course but my my, my feelings and my emotions are in my pen so mm. for me um, that's how I really felt and, mm. and I can go do all the other stuff if I wanted to because that's what I do but I'm like, mm -hmm. this is my contribution to what's going on in the world now. And if I don't do this and I get money for it, then I'm gonna feel like I'm selling myself out again because that mm -hmm. ain't how I feel. I can't be out here pe preaching, you know, disruption in all these crazy things. And I'm watching did a smooth people, transition, right, boy. I'm, I'm watching my a... people. I'm watching my people crumble because you know I wrote I wrote most of the last recession like looking at TV and going outside marching with people. And, 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 oh, yeah. really, and I'm looking at it in real time, like, yo, like, it's going down. You know what I mean? What you gonna say that's gonna resonate with people? If they like it or not, you gotta tell the truth. And so I told the truth. But the 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 the, the most thing was, for me, though, Mike, was being brave enough to do it and knowing that I am built myself up enough I'm telling that you. it ain't about rap and I don't just gotta have that money. Cause I done did so many other things. It's just like, I'm still gonna tell my truth. And then at the same time, maybe if they don't get it now, 10 years from now, when they dig that back up, they're gonna be like, you know, like Bobby Womack, like, man, he was talking that, he was talking that talk when it was going down, you know? You that's know why I mean? we love Bobby, you feel what I'm saying? That grown he was, man, right, that grown he was talking man. That talk. And it also about, you know, it's just about what I do though, like, you know, like not being able, not being scared to, to get outside my comfort zone, do things like this, and do things that I really believe oh, in because, a great job, yeah, man. because it's like, it's, it's, and a lot of people don't know that I had that vision of sitting on the couch, talking to some people, that wow. I love with a plain Jane watch on a nice suit and just really yeah. chopping it up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because what they might not get out of a rap song, they might get out of a conversation with me and you. You no know doubt. what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I mean? But might say it's about it. But you've been embraced by but you've been embraced you've been embraced by the best. Right. right. I've seen you I've seen you with Jay Z. I've right. seen you with I've seen you, you you was embraced by probably influenced you and right. stuff like that. Right. You know what I mean? Because I, I and like you said, you watched me Man, you got married to your beautiful wife. Right. <laughs> and, then, and then and then when I seen the verses, right. I'm like, I mean, just the way you handle things. Right. Right. It showed the growth. Yeah, no, it took it took a lot. It took a lot of work. That, that's the thing I say. Like I did a lot of lot a lot a lot of work on myself and it just like I just had to find me. Cause like people know you how they meet you. How was you do how did you do that? I mean, I just really just started going outside the box and really having conversations with people I really respect. 
Cause I want to mm. know, like, it, 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 like I want to know how people got to certain. You know, it's crazy. I even took the movie with you and Cube because I just wanted to understand what that was. And I always told myself, if I did a movie, I want to do it with Cube or or, or Denzel. And Cube mm. called me, and, and I just was like, okay, I could do this if I really wanted to do this. But in 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 going in there and working with you guys and having a good time and seeing how it's really done. It led me out to L.A. to work on some well, other we were things. were fans of yours. Right. That, cube, that, that, cube, that Cube was on you, boy. I, I, remember, I, remember, I remember Cube just like he was on some Jesus. Yeah, you know what I mean? Love, I love Cube. We had, with with uh, Modesto. <laughs> Modesto's finest. Modesto. Russell Red. Right. Hey, hey, look here, man. We should have never took that money right. from y'all. So. <laughs> Would y'all took me over to the spot to get some smoke. You tell me, man, Jesus, yeah. Jesus gonna do a show for us. He gonna pull up. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> but look, hey, man, we got this. Shoot- I, hey. I tell people all the time. I said that movie right there. If 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 you a real artist, right. you know you know them promoters. Right, you right. know them. that's why we gonna do number two. And the crazy thing when we was out there in, in, in the little um, the little the little Latino and uh, in a Hispanic little community, the real gang bangers came out. Hey, Holmes. Y'all in our neighborhood. It's like, oh, that's Jeezy, fool. I was like, yeah, it's me. <laughs> it's me. Y'all, did. y'all calm down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was serious. I got to take another break, but I'll be right back with my guy, Mike Epps. We getting into the whole Richard Prime situation, biopic and all, right here when we come back on Worth the Conversation. Worth the Conversation, and I'm still tapped in with my guy, Mike Epps, and we keeping it real right here. All about comedy and much more. Right here, it's worth the conversation. When I see you do your comedy and, and I watch a lot of your mannerism, it reminds me of the great Richard Pryor. Like, are you still doing that 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 um that biopic? Uh, what, what are you thinking? You know what? Uh, uh, much respect to the great Richard Pryor. You know. Uh, I went down a long road with that project, man. I, uh, you know, his wife called me up t- 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 to her house to speak with Richard Pryor about maybe like oh, 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 seven, oh, eight, something like that. And uh, from there, man, it's just been a, a roller coaster, man, right. you know, because nobody understood that it wasn't just me doing Richard Pryor. Right. It was it was walking into a uh, an estate that that was confused, man. Right, you know, right, he had right, 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 right. his kids was fighting okay. the wife. Right, 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 right. And I've always been in between that, man. I'm right. talking about like I I didn't been in Harlem and Richard Pryor's real son then walked up on me. Right. And and had words with me about doing his father's not no bad words right. like he was mad but it was just concern like you know because it's like that's just like you how right. could somebody go do a movie about right. Jeezy right. and not and not, and not to son. tap in with his son correct makes sense that makes because, sense because because Jeezy uh, 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 had had a girlfriend a wife or whatever or something like that but that's always been the situation with Richard Pryor I think that Richard Pryor has controlled his whole existence, everything, even after his death, he was that kind of guy. Right. It, it, I remember some, something somebody told me, one, one of his friends, David Banks, he said, he said, Richard Pryor is hunting everybody that know him right now. And I said, why you say that? He said, because he said, man, because he loved people to fight over him. Right. <laughs> he loved that. In his real life, he did. Wow. So it's you working know? out for him. Yeah, he like, he loved people fighting over me. To this day, his wife is still making announcements about people doing the Richard Pryor story. Like now, it's like it's uh, Kenya Bears. Right. It was. <laughs> it's, it started off <laughs> way before me. It was Damon Wayne. Right, 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 right. And then it went from Damon Wayne's to Marlon Wayne's wow. to me to, I mean. At one point, she had, man, she had all these comedians, Nick Cannon. I mean, to this day, me and Nick Cannon, I mean, you know, he's that's my man. But when that Richard Pryor thing came along, man, me and him was looking at each other. And I'm like, oh, God, man, it's, <laughs> it's a lot. 
Yeah, she, it was crazy how she puppeteered us with right, that right. shit. No, you, they got to go for it, man. I've I been checking out the Upshaws, man. Tell me about it. Wonders, I love Wonder, by the way. Wonder's funny as hell, Oh, Wonder's the truth. Tell me about the Ups. Tell me about it. Upshaws, man, is a uh, a show that I came up with, man. And uh, as you know, in Hollywood, man, we, you know, as a comedian, man, guys like us, Dave Chappelle, different guys, all of us then had a shot at a sitcom what? 90 times. 90 times. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> they got canceled. They right. didn't make it. Right. So that's that's a forever battle in Hollywood, but we always thinking of ideas uh, uh, to keep going. I thought of an idea. I said, man, you know what? We don't have nothing on TV that represents the Jeffersons, mm. um, the uh, Good Times, none of them shows. Right. I mean, I, I can't turn on the TV nowhere and look at a modern day show that I could say, okay, Looks that's connected like, right. to that. Mm, mm. That's our type of TV. It's right. new, but it's old. Right. I said, you know what? I'm I'm a I'm I have an idea about uh playing a Sanford and Son style film, and I want to do it with a female. Mm. You know, so on the show, Kim Fields is my wife, the great Kim Fields, legendary Kim Fields. Shout out to Kim Fields. We know Kim Fields from Facts of Life. Right. Um and I reached out to Wanda Sykes because I had so much respect for her. She was so funny and real and 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 just straight. You right, know, right. she Wanda was solid. Yeah, solid. Right. She, solid. She don't she don't bend no way. She's she's who she is, you know. Which which made this project become great. Took it to her. She went to another sister that uh, that wrote on uh that she wrote with when they did Roseanne named Regina Hicks. And I said, man, you know, this is the show. I, I want to do a Sanford and Son style show. So Kim is my wife and Wanda is uh, Kim's sister. And that's my antagonist. She don't want me to be with her sister. Mm -hmm. So me and her argue and fight on the show. And okay, okay. That real, old real, life, real life, real life situation. Yeah. <laughs> real you know life what I'm saying? <laughs> So that's how we came up with it. I love it, man. Tell one I said what's happening, man. I will, Let man. Ask you a question: If you weren't a comedian, what, what would Mike Epps be doing? Because the name is still there. You know what, man? Um, I used to when people used to ask me that. I used to say, "Oh, I'll be in prison," but I I rethought that. Okay. And I said, you know what? That's not that 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 wouldn't have been always the case. You know. Uh, Cause I never, I never enjoyed being a bad person. Right. That's one thing about me. I, I didn't flirted in the streets and did a whole bunch of stuff. Right. That's one thing about me. Like you said, when your grandmother and your mom and them raised you with some good stuff. That's right. You know, that's what saved us. Right. I never felt good about it. Right. So now that I'm who I am, I definitely would have been doing something to help some kids, man. Wow. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Cause wow. I th it, just like you, man. You we got we got that magic touch, man. When right. it comes to uh, having kids understand and 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 accepting us, right? As teachers, cause right. kids don't accept Everybody, adults all right. the time. They don't. And they were. Right. They you know you you gotta trick them with something. You know right. you gotta have a little. A little razzle, something, razzle down. Something. And I think I we think got they, that. They can relate to us. What, what would Mike Epps, what would 20 year old Mike Epps tell Mike Epps right now? What would your 20 year old self say to, to, to Mike Epps right now? Boy, you better get up and go work hard. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it ain't time to sit back yet. <laughs> she got some more work to do. <laughs> yeah, because you know, I, I appear to have a lot of energy, but boy, hey, man, you've been in the business as long as we have, man. <laughs> we didn't hit another gear, man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hit that six we ain't old, right, but right, we hitting another right, gear. Right, we ain't old, but we. <laughs> I love it, man. Hey, before we get out of here, Mike, man, I love talking to you, brother. I always give my my, uh, you. my my viewers uh, um, some words of wisdom, and just sitting here talking to you, man. I, I just feel today you got to just stay in your stay stay in your truth, stay true to who you are, stay solid, mm -hmm. and know that you are enough no matter what, you know, hmm. and everything ain't about, you know, what you can spend or what you can wear, or what you can drive. You could be rich all the way on your own, you know, Real just being you. That's 
Real and, talk. And, um, and, and that's my words of wisdom today. Just know that you are enough. Mike you Epps, my you brother. Are enough. You hear that? I appreciate you. I love you, man. We got to get I up soon. You. Anything you, you need, you call me, brother. I'm here. Hey, much love and much thanks love for having me, for man. Sure. And I'm catching the Upshaws, just so y'all know. <laughs> yeah, May the 12th. May 12th on Netflix. Check out the Upshaws. There it is, brother. Love you.